we're going to kick off this section by looking at some of the most commonly used and also some of the simplest things JavaScript has to offer. The first concept is called data types. Data types are pretty simple. As it sounds, it is a type of data which we're using. To begin, I've opened up the JavaScript starter files on number one, which is variables, strings, and numbers, and then open up the index page, both in the text editor and also over inside the browser. In this video, we're going to look at two of these data types, and these are strings and numbers. A string is just some text such as a name and a number is, as you have guessed, a number which is positive or negative, such as a user's age. Also, we need a way to store these values too, and this is where variables come in. I'm going to go over to Chrome and open up the console with right click and then inspect. Then if we go to this console tab, which is just here, this is the console where we can run some JavaScript. As always, if you're using a different browser, all major browsers have a console too. You can usually find this console from the menu, often under the developer tools. We've already seen the elements tab and also took a brief look at the network tab too. This time though, we're going to be using this console. To begin, we create a variable by using the var keyword. So let's just scroll in so we can see this a little bit better. So type in the var keyword. A variable is simply a place to store our data, such as a string or number. We then give this variable a name. So if we wanted to store a user's name, we could simply store the name like this. So var name equals Chris. So this equal symbol assigns this value to this variable name of Chris. And then we end this with a semicolon. Strings need to be surrounded in quotes. This can be either single quotes, which is just like this, or double quotes like we've used here, and then hit enter. To call this in the console, we just type the name of our variable. So if we type in name, we then get returned the value of Chris. So we see some arrows on the left hand side. The right arrow is the input which we put in. So we've added the name of Chris and then returned back to us, we have the value of Chris. If we wanted to change the value of this variable, we can do what is called reassignment. We just call the variable name, just like this, without the var keyword and set it to a new value with the equal symbol. So we can add a new name such as Chris Dixon and then a semicolon at the end and hit enter. And now we get returned back to us the value of Chris Dixon. Again, if we just call name, hit enter, we'll get this value returned once more. We can create as many variables as we need to, such as our age too. Again, using a var keyword, we set the name of age and set this to a value of 34. When working with numbers, we don't surround the value in quotes just like we did with the string. We just simply type the number like this, then hit enter. If we call our age variable by typing in age, we then get returned the value of 34. Sometimes we see undefined too, just like we've seen here, such as when we set a variable. This is just because nothing is returned in this case. We are just simply setting or assigning this variable. So we have our name and age variables declared, but how can we now use this? Well, we could do something like adding them to a sentence. So if we declare a new variable called joined, we can set this equal to a string. So my name is, and then add a space. And then we can add a plus symbol to add anything to the end of this. I'm going to add our variable of name. So this will be my name is, and then Chris, then another plus symbol to add a second string. We can add, and I am, and then a space, and then add our age variable onto the end. So this should print out my name is Chris, and I am 34. Joining strings and variables like this with the plus symbol is also called concatenation, or concat for short, but this is just a fancy term for joining these together. And then hit enter, 
and then we can type in joins, which is our variable name, and there's our string, which we expected. JavaScript is also the default scripting language for all major browsers. So this is why it all works fine inside the console. But more realistically, we want to add the code over into our project. If we go over to our starter files, again in our first one, which is variables, strings, and numbers, we can get to work adding this inside of here. You don't need to use these starter files if you prefer, but it will just save us typing out all the HTML structure we need each time. It will also be handy for future reference too. JavaScript can be added even in the head or the body section. It's often preferred to add it to the bottom of the body section, just before the closing tag. This means it will be loaded last and not block the rest of the HTML from loading. The JavaScript is placed inside of script tags. So let's open up the opening and closing script tag. And then we can go ahead with adding our code inside, just like we did inside the console. So just like we did before, we can add our variable of name equals Chris. And to display this in the console, we can do a console.log. And then inside the brackets, we can add our variable name. So save that. Clear the console and reload. And there's our value of Chris. We can then reassign this name, just like we did inside the console. Again, this time without the variable. And then change this to be my full name. Again, we can console log this same name variable, reload, and there's our reassign name. And then let's do the age next. So var age equals 34. And then we can also do our same string that we did inside the console of joined. So we can set this equal to my name is at a space. Then we can add our variable name. So this will be my name is Chris. And then the string of and I am, a space, and then add on the end the age variable with the semicolon at the end. Then we can console.log our new string of joins over to the console, reload, and there we go. So there's our string, which includes our variables of our name and age. We said earlier that we can use double or single quotes when working with strings. There is a case though when we need to be careful. If we change our quotes to be single, so a single at the start, and the end of this string, and then also replace these two here. So now all our strings are single. Save and then refresh. We see this still works perfectly fine. The problem arises when we want to use one of these same quotes in our text. So if you go for I'm instead of I am, just like that, we can see that we have a blue letter here to indicate a problem. If we save and then refresh, we get a syntax error. This is because our quotations are no longer in pairs and things are a little bit mixed up. Fixing this is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is surround this section in the opposite type of quote. So here, rather than having the three single quotes, let's change these surrounding ones to be double. Just like that. So we could even just change this section here, or we can change all of these single ones to be doubles except the one that we want here. Either way will work fine. Save and then reload. And now our string works perfectly fine with the apostrophe here. So this is just something to be aware of when using quotations. And now we'll move on to the next video where we'll take a look at JavaScript arithmetic and operators.